I like spicy food, I like keeping plants, and I like to make my own stuff. So, it was only a matter of time before I started growing chili peppers. It all began in 2005 with a simple cayenne. And then I discovered that it's actually quite easy to cross different chili peppers. All you need is a sturdy pincer like those used by watchmakers. Use that pincer to remove the petals and the male parts of an unopened flower on the plant that you want to use as a mother in the cross. Just carefully push it aside and rip it out. You might need some practice for this. And... There we are. Almost. So, only the female part is left. You should mark your manipulated flower with a bit of string. And then we need some pollen from the plant you want to use as a male on the cross. And transfer it. Done. I went a little bit over the top with this new skill and mixed up no less than six different chili peppers. To illustrate my point, this is how I described the parentage of a chili pepper in 2016 that is an offspring of all those six. Just look at this alphanumerical abomination. Ugh. However, in 2009, as a part of it, I took carioca, a cute little chili pepper cultivar from Brazil, and pollinated it with Butyolokia, the legendary ghost pepper that was the first one to be recognized as breaking the 1 million Scoville heat unit wall. This produced, fanfares and trumpets please, the first generation of carioca. And now I had some actual golds in my chili breeding. Naturally, many of my selected traits deal with the ripe fruit. There are some obvious differences between carioca and butyolokia, so let's have a look at those fruit traits and see which ones I prefer. Color The fruits of carioca ripen to orange, while those of butyolokia ripen all the way to red. This is a simple dominant recessive trait, and red is dominant over orange. So, the first generation of Cariolokia always ripened all the way to red, just like Butyolokia. Stem The fruit or flower stems of Carioca stand up, while those of Butyolokia hang down. This is also, more or less, a dominant recessive trait, with hanging down dominant over standing up which again can be seen in the first generation of Cariolokia. Form The fruits of Carioca are round, the fruits of Budiolokia are elongated. Also their surface is somewhat rough and not as smooth as in Carioca. Carioca and Budiolokia differ also in how the fruits are distributed on the plant. Carioca has notably more fruits in direct neighborhood which is a trait I highly prefer. Taste Carioca has a typical habanero aroma to it, which I would describe as somewhat peachy or soapy, and I'm not really that fond of it. And so I would prefer the fruity aroma of Butyolokia. Yes, it actually has a taste, it's not just hot. Heat level Carioca is at least hot, or very hot, but... Uh, but Yulukia is of course insanely hot. And of course, I prefer that. Because it's cool to eat hot. Size The fruits of Carioca are much, much smaller than those of Butyulokia. I like that. 
I enjoy my heat packaged in small portions. This way, it's much more feasible to munch on a fresh fruit. So, I prefer this trait. To use an analogy from a more common type of substance abuse, you wouldn't gulp down a whole pint of strong booze, but only a small shot glass. At least I think that's what you would, because uh, I'm not really that well versed in this regard. Small fruits are good. Well, I have been breeding Cariolochia for five generations in the meantime. Long enough, in fact, to turn it homozygous again. If not for all, then at least for most of its chromosomes. Let's see how far I got. As you can see, there are many flowers in direct neighborhood. So, number per node, check. Look at those fruits. Botanically speaking, they are berries, by the way. They're quite small, aren't they? In fact, they are so small, they fit into my little chili mill. I can dry them whole and stick them right into the mill. That's very nice, because there's no need to mess around with hot juices by cutting the peppers up. The dried fruits of Cariolochia in the fifth generation are only a little bit larger than those of Carioca. Therefore, size, check. The fruits of Carioca in the fifth generation certainly do not taste like habaneros. But I'm not sure if they are nice and fruity, but the main thing is they don't taste peachy or soapy. So, well, check, sort of. Cariolochia 5th generation certainly is not mild, but I'm not sure if they're insanely hot. Either I have become desensitized in the meantime, or they just aren't. So, heat level, check maybe, or not. Although I'm somewhat satisfied with Cariolochia in the 5th generation, I think they are perhaps somewhat lacking in the taste and heat department and therefore I try to breed in some other super hot chili peppers. I was successful in 2014 by breeding in the Trinidad Scorpion Moruga Red. This is a fruit of the Trinidad Scorpion Moruga Red produced by a cross just as described above. I did both crosses with Cariolochia as a father and as a mother, but I only seeded out those where Trinidad Scorpion Moruga Red was a mother. And this produced the Cariolochia Scorpion Strang D. Once again, because red and hanging down is dominant, the fruits in the first generation were red and hanging down. But in order to shorten things up, in 2015 I did a back cross and crossed Cariolochia 5th generation back into it, because I only want a little bit of a hint of the scorpion in it. I seeded this back cross and got nice little plants. And their fruits are ripening right now. And it's really interesting to look at how the traits are distributed. So far my favorites are the number 9 and the number 11. Some of you may have noticed that I used two former champions of heat levels in my breeding. The Butiolochia and the Trinidad Scorpion Maruga Red. And of course now there's the Carolina Reaper. So, will there be a Cariolochia Reaper maybe? Perhaps not. For various reasons. The Reaper is a recent cross itself and I vote to stop giving into the heat hype. Cariolochia scorpion sounds cool enough and it is a nice little mix of chili peppers from India, Brazil and Trinidad. That's it for now and keep in mind, the spice must flow.